Okay, second video. So in this area, what you might consider doing is maybe transplanting some of the ferns that aren't visible in the back and put them in here. Because this is a kind of a, you can see this is just a weed area. And the ferns tie in with what you have going on the property. This is a really shady area. So um, maybe you need some topsoil and transplant a bunch of ferns. Um, I would take out the vinca because it's very patchy in this area. Doesn't look good. And just put all ferns in this area. So that would be a pretty low cost way to really improve the aesthetics and have it tie in with what you already have. Okay. So as far as maintenance goes, again, that'll cut your maintenance down by not having to go crazy with the weeding. And over here, there used to be uh, like a mulch bed. You can see it's connected because there's no sunlight in here. Um, same thing, you might just put in ferns in here, right? It ties in with the property. These you might have to buy because I'm not sure if you're gonna have enough in the back to fill this whole area. But um, that might be a great option. And again, it ties in with everything else you have. You could do ostrich ferns in here and just kind of fill this area. That could be pretty, okay. Over here, because I think it's closer to your house, this I'd actually make into like a nice perennial landscape bed and have this all kind of tied to the house. So I would add perennials in here in the future. You've got some astilbe, which are up there, but this area I would actually mulch, that area I'd mulch all the way around the house. Um, you've got You've got some climbing hydrangea and then two different types of hydrangeas up there. You have mop head hydrangeas, which rarely bloom. Those are the blue ones, the right directly in front of me. And then you've got uh, paniculata hydrangeas, which are gonna start blooming in about two weeks. There's one, two, three of those. Those have cone-shaped flowers and they usually bloom at the end of the July through the frost. So I think this area is actually not bad. I would. I don't know about these blue, the blue hydrangeas, maybe you end up replacing those with um, Annabelle hydrangeas, which guarantee to bloom and they bloom white. You could probably get like five Annabelle hydrangeas in there or maybe more than that. I would fill that whole area with Annabelle hydrangeas. Those two um, paniculata hydrangeas aren't getting enough sunlight. So I'd transplant those elsewhere in the property, those two. Maybe transplant the mop head hydrangeas where it's less visible and then just fill that area with Annabelle hydrangeas. That'd be really pretty. Those started blooming about two weeks ago. And um, I'd say you probably need like 11 to fill that area and that could be really pretty. And this way you can see that through the windows of your house as well. Then this area We fixed the, you know, you'll notice we put the drainage in for you, but oh, it's something to think about as far as design goes, but this area, I would rework this area too, because it's a pretty prime visible area. So I'd rethink this area in the, fu in the future. All right. Then obviously I'd rethink everything along this hill too for the future, remove some things, add some things, transplant some things, but that's more of a bigger project for the future. From a maintenance perspective, you might, for the time being, kind of prioritize what you want to do. Because you've got a lot, a lot of plants. I mean, this whole area in here is all kind of invasive weeds are trying to kind of cover some of the plants. Um, so I think you, again, I think you sort of prioritize. You can see these are all weeds in here too and all through this whole bed is weeds. It's a big bed. It's a lot of, it's a lot of maintenance to maintain this. But typically what you'd end up doing is you gotta remove all the weeds and then you mulch it. But my suggestion to you for now is maybe just weed whack it down for now, every month. Because to, to clean all these weeds up is gonna take forever. And then once you decide that you wanna kinda renovate this area, then do it the right way the first time with more plants that will prevent some of these weeds from growing and then start mulching it. Um, so you really got to think, you know, how you want to handle this. 
but you've got, like I said, you got all these these vines that are kind of taking over some of the plants. Um, a lot of these grasses are in good shape. They can be reworked or maybe even stay where they are, but then add other plants where you need it. Um, but this area as a whole, I think I would, I would, uh, you know, consider looking at this in the future as a, a more more of a design project. I mean, look over here where you have shade, the pachysander is growing well, right? You'll notice that the pachysander really cuts down the amount of weeds that you get. So over there, the pachysander is not gonna work if you get too much sunlight. But you could, you could, we could think about something that will potentially work in that area so you're not having to weed a ton, not having to put a ton of mulch down and still have a nice aesthetic. You might even turn some of that area back into lawn because the, the slope the, the steepness of the slope is not is not super aggressive or you might be able to just lawn it and then regain some of your lawn make your backyard feel like a little bit more usable um, so there's there's different ways you can approach this like I said this area is easier to maintain because you, you don't have a ton of weeds You got some Andromeda over here. This is kind of a no man's land. I don't think you necessarily need to do anything over here, starting with kind of where that rock is. This I would just kind of leave natural woods. The dwarf chop maple I would probably transplant. Eventually in like 10 years it'll look good. It grows very slow. Get some butterfly bush. Some Henry's Garnet Itea, which just hasn't been trimmed in a long time, but you could probably revive this and cut this way back. And basically rejuvenate it. And the lawn stretches around through here. At the tennis court. And the lawn kind of stretches through here. And this is kind of no man's land down here. So I'm assuming you're just going to leave this how it is. Not going to really touch that. And here you might take half this area and just make it lawn. The lawn itself... You know, if you get on a good lawn fertilizing program with us, we can get the lawn looking a lot better. We probably have to check the whole irrigation system for you because I'm assuming there's probably going to be some other repairs that are needed on this side of the property. I know we have to add irrigation the other side to get the lawn so it doesn't brown out on that side. That's about it. Thanks a lot, we'll talk to you soon.